Chapter 2, Among the many proofs which in the present day are afforded of a general and extensive enlargement of the minds of the people of England, few stand out in bolder relief, and in stronger contrast to the misnamed good old times, than the liberality of sentiment on the subject of our commercial regulations, which is now rapidly spreading among all classes of the community. Although, as I shall have occasion to show, many absurd and unjust restrictions on trade still exist, which cripple the efforts of our industry and cause much injury, yet, on the whole, in affairs of this kind, a decided improvement has taken place, and a brighter light is beginning to shine upon us. There are now many influential and intelligent persons, forward to contend, that one of the best ways to promote the real interests of a nation, and to advance it towards a state of opulence, is to make trade of all kinds both domestic and foreign, as a free as the exigencies of the state will allow. But there is still much error and political mismanagement on this subject, and the entertainment of more enlightened views, and the adoption of a more liberal course of policy in this respect, is much to be desired. It will be my object, by various arguments, to show the propriety of removing as far as possible from the transactions of commerce, restrictions of all kinds and also all extraneous and unnatural encouragements, leaving it to flow easily, in the channel to which it naturally tends. First, to treat the subject generally, and to explain and enforce what may be termed some of its principal doctrines. I conceive it should be one of the leading maxims of political economy, to allow the individuals composing a nation, to pursue each his own interest in his own way, for in so doing all will be sure to advance the prosperity of that nation. This will appear plain on a little consideration. A nation is an aggregate of individuals. It is evident whatever conduces to the wealth of each one, proportionately conduces to the general wealth of the whole, and each person is assuredly the best judge what course of trade or industry is most likely to promote his own interests. What would be said of a man who should presume to enter the shop of a tradesman, or the counting house of a merchant? and give him advice as to what articles he should deal in, in order to enrich himself, or in what articles he should forbear to deal, that he might lose no money. Would not such a person be told by the tradesman, or the merchant, that he knew far better how to conduct his business to his own advantage than another person could tell him? These may seem plain truths, but, if, politically, they have ever been admitted in theory, they have not been fully carried out in practice. In many of our public commercial affairs, a course of conduct exactly similar to that which I have just supposed, is pursued. It has long been the practice, unnaturally to support by government regulations, certain branches of trade, which are supposed to promote the welfare of the country in some way or other, but I contend, that while such branches of trade were really beneficial, they would support themselves for while there is a demand there is always a supply, and when the demand ceases the supply should also cease, and the industry till then exercised to furnish such supply, should be left to flow into some other channel, not to be enabled to go in its old course by extraneous contrivances. Indeed what absurd consequences would an extension of such policy produce? Where would our numerous modern improvements have been if this doctrine had been boldly acted upon? We should then have enacted laws to repress the introduction of machinery, for fear of depriving the workers by hand of their employment, to discourage steam navigation lest it should be detrimental to the interests of the owners and mariners of sailing vessels, to prevent the construction of railroads, for fear of doing injury to the stagecoach proprietors. This doubtless appears to be a foolish course of conduct, but I contend it is no more foolish than preventing our being supplied with any commodity by other nations at a much less price than it now costs under the apprehension of injuring the home producers. This it is that keeps up the price of many articles in universal demand, and I am inclined to think the mischievous tendency of such a course of procedure, will in time be universally admitted. As I have before observed, a brighter light has begun to shine upon us. Everyone knows that much is now seen to be folly which at one time was looked upon as the height of political wisdom. What absurdity would be apparent, on a review of some of the opinions once held on subjects connected with political economy. To give one example, it is now granted by all liberal-minded people, to be very desirable that different nations should bear a friendly disposition towards each other, that they should be cemented together in the bonds of amity, should consider themselves all members of one common family, 
should live in peace, and grant to each other mutual privileges. But how different were the sentiments held on this subject in former times? Even in England, to be a foreigner and to suffer oppression were inseparably connected. Abundance of statutes were passed, imposing various kinds of disabilities on aliens, of this description is the one which enacts, that no Englishman shall within this realm sell or cause to be sold, hereafter, to any merchant alien, any manner of merchandises, only for ready payment in hand, or else merchandises for merchandises, to be paid and counted in hand, upon pain of forfeiture of the same, but what would be said of such a ridiculous law now, and is it saying too much, to affirm, that some of our present commercial regulations are almost as detrimental to our national prosperity. It is true that we no longer persecute foreigners merely because they are such, but I think that an inspection of our national tariff would convince anyone, that by means of exorbitant duties, we keep away much wealth which would otherwise be brought into the country. Instead of a liberal system of commerce, a system of reciprocity, we have adopted a prohibitory one to the great injury of the bulk of the community, as I shall now endeavour to show.